Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's wonderful to have you here in person with us. This is a Shehechianu moment as we intentionally return the sanctuary. I'm going to let you in on some inner lingo here. This is what we call the round. Do you see it? It does go all the way around, even though we're not completely filled this evening. Um, we're filled in spirit. Though, we're filled in spirit. Come on. <laughs> we haven't filled every seat, but that's okay. Um, we are hoping to return to this sense of wholeness and community in this space um, and be able to see one another face to face. Um, and so that's why our setup is a little bit different. I can even see eye to eye with Ilan, who's here this evening, and my colleagues as well. So you're going to be seeing us moving around perhaps a little bit more than we have done since the pandemic, although we are keeping in mind that our camera here is making sure that we can include our community on Zoom. But up here on the lectern, we've got them right here. So even when our back um, is to them, um, we, I can see them all here right on Zoom. So while they are greeting one another on Zoom, let us take this opportunity to greet one another face to face. There might be some folks who are here for the first time in a long time, or perhaps someone that you do not yet know by name. So please introduce yourselves, and we'll come back together in song. Right, we've introduced ourselves. Now let's open our souls with some singing. Lai 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 we know, yes, I'm on, just not as loud. Of course, we know that it is Labor Day weekend, and I was thinking today, always from a Jewish lens, always from a Jewish lens, isn't it silly that Labor Day is a day off? And of course, we know Labor Day to be an observance to help us fulfill our American values of respecting the worker and making sure um, that we take this time off. And 
don't work every single day of the week, but of course we know that our tradition, perhaps God was the one who originally invented this first Labor Day, but we don't call it Labor Day, we actually call it by its original name, which is Shabbat. That day to take a rest is ingrained within our tradition, not just once a year, but every single week. So as we observe Labor Day, this year. I hope you will take good use of that day off on Monday, whatever it is that you are going to do. Um, But today we begin this spiritual day of rest, Um, not only to separate ourselves from the week, which I hope you'll be able to do, uh, but to fill up your spiritual tanks with a sense of greater shalom. So now that we are all together as one Zoom community, I can tell because Cantor Zell and Rabbi Sissamoyan have just joined us in our sanctuary. Let's begin to fill this Zoom and physical sanctuary up as one community with song. And we're going to join together with a, a melody that we have sung a little bit throughout the summer, but as we are nearing toward the beginning of the school year, we just want to make sure everyone knows this is a new melody and we're going to keep bringing it back time and time again until it feels incredibly familiar in all of our mouths and our ears and our hearts. And it's going to sound like this. Let us enter into this sacred space of Shabbat with the lighting of our Shabbat candles. I want to call forward Barbara Epstein to join us on the bima for the honor of lighting our candles this evening. If you're joining us from home or on Zoom, we would love to see your Shabbat candles in front of you. Beautiful. As Barbara comes forward, let's turn to page 120 whenever you're ready. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotah V'tzivanu Thank you, Barbara. Shabbat shalom to you. And we are truly honored to be blessed with so much love and so much talent in this community. It is truly inspiring. And so I have invited Jackie and Hannah Scholl to join us once again on the Bima so that they can uplift our worship with their beautiful voices. Let's um, actually welcome this angelic sound and the angels of Shabbat on page 142 with the words of Shalom Aleichem. Ha 
continue in our prayer books on page 138 with the words of Lachado Di, come, let's greet the Sabbath bride. Shamor v'zachor b'dibur echad Sabbath bride. Bowie the shalom, 
Before we continue, I just want to say Yasher Koch. It's so good to have you in the sanctuary <laughs> after two and a half years on Zoom. And you're muted on Zoom. We can't hear you. And we can only see you. So I just want to thank you for being here and lending your voice. In truth, we heard you on Zoom at times, but there's nothing like hearing the harmonies in our sanctuary. So Yasher Koch, beautifully done. As we now turn to Bar Hu, our call to worship. The words can be found on page 146 in the sanctuary. <laughs> can come on up here. The talent continues, And Rabbi. I just want to put in a plug for the canter it, <laughs> because I can't Please. think of a more rewarding profession <laughs> than awesome. being clergy, uh, being a rabbi or a cantor. And so it's good to have a cantorial student from TBE lead us. Let's continue with the words of Shema. In the sanctuary, they can be found on page 152, a reminder that God is all around us. Let's take a deep breath. Ma Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivu Continuing next page. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha bechol levavcha u'bechol nafshecha u'bechol meodecha ve'hayu advarim ha'ele. Asher anuchi mitzavecha Hayom al levavecha Vishinantam levanecha 
Bam, Vishivtecha, Vivetecha, Uvlechtecha, Vaderech, Uvshochbecha, Uvkumecha, Ukshartam leho, Talia decha, Behayuletotafot, Bain e necha, Uchtavtam, Almizuzot betecha, Uvisharecha, Leman tizkeru, Vasitem et kol mitzvotai, Vitem gnoshim lelohechem, Ahani, Adonai lohechem, Asher hotseti etchem, Me eretz mitzrayim, Liot lachem lelohim, Ani Adonai Elohechem, Adonai Elohechem, Emet. Shabbat shalom. And so in the words of the Ahavta, we're informed to perform deeds of loving kindness, mitzvot, with the hope that we make the world a better place, that we transform our world to a place of peace and shalom, to be one day celebrated with a song of redemption. The words Mi Chamocha, they can be found on page 158. <laughs> Hundred and sixty, recognizing we're at that, we're not at that moment of perfection yet. We ask God to bring love and understanding, and inspire us to goodness. Page one hundred and sixty. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Hashkive. Okay. 
all rise if you're able. Page 164, Adonai Svatai. Oh God, open up our mouths. Adonai Svatai Tlitai
We continue independently with our own private prayers and meditations of gratitude through page 180. When you are finished, you may be seated. Prayer for peace down from the heavens for all of us, page 180. O se shalom bim roma, huya se shalom aleinu, ve al kol of shalom, to prayers of shalemut, to prayers of wholeness for those who are in need of healing, whether it is in need of healing of body, of spirit, or of mind. If you are with us on Zoom this evening, we invite you to share the name of the loved one you are thinking of in our chat. And if you're with us in person, we invite you to rise to share the name of your loved one as well. I'll begin with the name of Don Benevitz. Let us join together as a community, page 371. <laughs> Stop 
stands before us. Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. sending a TBE heart tap to all those who are in need of healing and to you too as well for lifting our spirits. Thank you. So we celebrate the God-given milestones that we experience each week, our birthdays, our anniversaries, other happy occasions that we have to share. So I can see you here on Zoom. I'm going to turn on my video so I can say hello. Please let us know if you are celebrating a birthday. Let's start with birthdays first. Anyone here having celebrated a birthday this week? Any birthdays on Zoom? Paula, are you waving? Mazel tov. Wonderful. Any other birthdays on Zoom? I'm just going to scroll through for a second. I don't see any others. All right, how about anniversaries? I'm going to start with... Two anniversaries here that we heard about this week, the 20th anniversary of Elizabeth and Danny Nabisky, who I know are on Zoom this evening, mazel tov, and the 57th anniversary of Judy and Paul Zorfus, who's, they're not here, but they're in this, they're on Zoom, and is it your anniversary as well? And it's also the l -bond. they're waving me down, I'm like, but you're not the Zorfuses, mazel tov to all of you. And I also want to send a mazel tov to Marilyn and Dale Ocano on the birth of their granddaughter, Charlotte. Any others to name the Shabbat? Izzy, what is it? Izzy received her Jewish name today. Mazel tov to you. Cyril Malka. Welcome officially to the Jewish people with that name. Any other Shachianu moments to share? Yes, Smyrna. Amen to that. I bet others can relate, Myrna. I'm going to say it in the microphone so everyone he could hear. Having COVID earlier, but today being the first day that you're not feeling exhausted. Yeah. Welcome back to you as well. So fabulous. So we have a few more occasions to celebrate. Come on up, Cancer Zell. Thank you, Rabbi Sapphire. I think um, we're going to begin together with a little bit of a blessing, yes. for we have not one, but two young couples getting married in the week or week, week or two ahead. And so, do you want to begin? I would love to begin. I want to welcome Daniel and Anna, uh, who are on Zoom with us this evening. I will have the pleasure of officiating their wedding on Sunday, and we're so happy um, to know that their families are joining them on Zoom. I believe that your parents are with us um, as well, so I want to send a mazel tov to you. And I would like to extend a very warm welcome to Ilan and Julie, and I'd like to call you up to the Bima. Cantor Suffern will be officiating at your wedding next weekend, and we want to also welcome Iris and Eugene and Rabbi David and Jane to our sanctuary. We are celebrating with all of you, so let's come on up to the Bima. And I know that Anna and Daniel are spotlit on our Zoom screen as well, and we're going to open the ark. Please let's rise. All rise. In fact, I'm going to swap the two of you. 
because you're going to stand before the ark. And Anna and Daniel, if there's any way you can do the same thing at home on Zoom, we're placing you before the ark the same way that you're going to stand beneath the chuppah on your wedding day. And so we ask for this blessing for Anna, Daniel, Ilan, and Julie. Mikor hachayim, source of all life, we ask for your blessing upon Ilan, Julie, Anna, and Daniel. We pray that the sacred commitments of their wedding day will sustain them all the days of their lives. May the love that binds them be lasting and their hearts be filled with patience and understanding. May their home be a mikdash mi'at, a sanctuary built on devotion to God, Torah, and Israel. May they be blessed with health and courage as their love and friendship deepens through the years. We pray that they will enjoy good fortune and find wholeness and peace together. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Cantor Suffren, will you join me? We pray that your marriage may be a sign of goodness for all to come in our world. Let's join together in these words of Simintov Umazeltov. And he plays the piano too. For all of these Shehechianu moments, it was not lost to me, Elon, that you ran to the piano to accompany <laughs> yourself for that Mazel Tov. Uh, but for all of these joyous moments, these birthdays, these anniversaries, love, new Jewish name. Feeling good after COVID. Feeling good <laughs> after COVID. Let's turn to the words of Shehechianu. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech Dr. Suffren and I were just reflecting yesterday uh, when I arrived at Temple Beth Elohim 23 years ago, our summer services were lay led each week. We would have different members uh, lead services and deliver the Devar Torah. And increasingly we grew and it got a little more intimidating and intimidating, unfortunately. But uh, we look forward to our summer services when our lay leaders do step forward and lead. And uh, this being our last summer service of the season, I'm thrilled that one of our students of Torah has agreed to deliver the Devar Torah, the teaching this evening. And so Eric, if you'll come forward and share your words of Torah with us, and on behalf of all of the clergy who get to learn from you this evening, thank you. Thank you. Does this work? Yes. You can hear me. Good. Thanks. So Shabbat Shalom. And once again, I want to thank the clergy for yielding their time up here uh, yet another time so I could deliver the Devat Torah. The Parsha this week is Shoftim, Judges. What better Parsha could a lawyer ask for? A real smorgasbord of legal issues. So as I thought about what I would say and how fortunate I was to speak about legal matters, witnesses, justice, evidence, I began to think it might be interesting for me and a bit tiresome for you, the congregation. And it is you to whom I want to reach. After all, it's Labor Day weekend, summer is still with us, high holidays are approaching, and haven't we heard enough about the law, Supreme Court decisions in June, uh, warrants, affidavits, special masters in August. I, yet, I can't give up the opportunity as a lawyer. There are very few things 
uh, that lawyers like more than to hear the sound of their own voice talking about legal matters. And I even wore my lawyer suit tonight, uh, even though it's before Labor Day and it could have been more casual. So the opening lines of Shoftim, in part, command the Israelites to appoint judges who are fair and impartial. Here this Shabbat, we are going to turn back the clock to just before the Israelites are going to enter the Promised Land and just before the death of Moses. I'm going to represent Moses, and he appoints all of you here in the sanctuary and those of you on Zoom to hear a case that I'm going to argue on his behalf. And I know Moses, and I, and I, and I know, and Moses knows that simply because he appointed you, it does not mean that you will rule on his behalf. I'm also going to deal with the last few minutes of Moses' life, and in that context, the month of Elul and the Nila service. I, lift, I leafed through some materials that Rabbi Harper distributed earlier this summer, and I came upon chapter 20, verses 7 through 12 of the Book of Numbers. So here is what happened, the undisputed facts of this case. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I gave them. And last summer, Rabbi Sapphire, who also I want to thank you for your commentary on my draft, um, taught this particular, these particular verses. And if I recall correctly, she and I had a robust and respectful discussion about our differing points of view. We did not agree, and now I get one more chance to persuade her. <laughs> and she has to listen. <laughs> so here are the questions that I would like you to consider. First, is God's decision to deny Moses and Aaron the opportunity to bring the Israelites into the Promised Land a righteous judgment? Second, when the judgment is about to be imposed on Moses near the end of the book of Devorim, Deuteronomy, should he have protested? God shows him the Promised Land and tells Moses he will not set foot in the Promised Land. Moses is silent in the Torah but not in another writing which I will cite to you. And third, should Moses have asked God to forgive him for this minor transgression? As to the first question, the answer is unambiguously no. The judgment is not righteous. All Moses did was to obtain water for the thirsty Israelites and their livestock in the dry and arid desert. He was thinking of them, getting them water, and not the manner in which he was to to obtain it. And God did not tell Moses not to strike the rock. And why tell Moses and Aaron to get their staffs if they were not going to use them? Again, Rabbi Sapphire speculated that maybe he was testing Moses. That's not a theology that I feel comfortable with. In a few weeks, we'll be reading at Rosh Hashanah, uh, God's um, testing of Abraham with respect to uh, sacrificing Isaac. And we know poor Job lost everything as a result of being tested in a wager. So, Your Honors, I don't need to summarize all... all I'm sorry. <laughs> you are... <laughs> that's okay. Judges can always interrupt somebody arguing, so, and I really appreciate it, so thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really, I really don't mind. When God, wanted to, um, when God wanted to obliterate the Israelites for building and worshiping the golden calf, Moses advocated for his people, and God relented and did not destroy them. Moses appealed to God's ego. What would the Egyptians think of you? You brought all of these plagues on them. 
and we escaped, and for what, to be obliterated in the desert? The Egyptians would have a good laugh at your expense. Remember your honors, God can be persuaded by appealing to God's ego. Abraham did so when pleading for the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? The judge of all the earth must do what is just. So again, Your Honors, Moses did so much for the Israelites, he deserves at least a few more minutes of life to be in the promised land. You can plead to God on Moses' behalf because he will not. So now the sentence is about to be executed. God tells Moses that he will not enter the promised land because he did not obey God on the matter of the water. In the Torah, Moses accepts his fate, quietly. But listen, in Sefer Ha'agadah, the book of legends, Moses is pleading, begging, crying to be admitted into the promised land to cross the Jordan. God is so concerned that God orders the ministering angels, quote, to bolt all the gates of every firmament because Moses' prayer was like a sword, ripping and tearing, and nothing could stop it. But Moses didn't give up. He, at le he asked, at least let me be buried in the promised land, as Joseph will be. And to no avail, God does not relent. Where would we be without my client and his efforts not only to teach us the Torah, but to be sure that we followed it? As you discuss your judgment, for those of you who have been to Israel, how you felt the joy, the overwhelming emotion as you touched the tarmac or terminal in a sovereign Jewish state. My first trip was from Munich uh, on El Al. I was the only American on the flight, and uh, the pilot announced the Israeli coastline. Tears came to my eyes and all the Israeli uh, young students just cheered, and it's a feeling that really can't be replicated. So Moses should be able to experience that we fell thousands of years after he led our people to the promised land and was denied entry. At the time of his death, Moses was 120 years old, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The only reason that Moses will not be permitted to enter the promised land is because of his alleged transgression. It's a matter of timing. The Israelites are ready to enter the promised land and Moses has the strength to continue to be their leader. This is not just or fair. The judge of all the world in this case is not being just in this instance. So I have two more questions. Which Moses do you prefer, the one of the Torah or the one of the Agadah? For me, the Moses of the Agadah is my hero. I love him. And finally, what do you think about the notion that in the Agadah, that God wants all the gates of the firmament closed? Picture yourselves, your honor, asking God at least to give Moses one last chance to, to repent. Remind God of God's infinite mercy, appeal to God's ego. We are in the month of Elul, heading towards the high holidays in Teshuvah. So listen for my last quote from a writing by Rabbi Edwin Goldberg, from lead editor, I believe, of Mishkan Nefesh, the reform prayer book that we will pray from on Yom Kippur. Quote, the Nila service on late Yom Kippur afternoon is notable for its image of the gates of repentance closing, closing their doors. At this late and hungry hour for the final time during the Day of Atonement, we are summoned to repentance. At the end of Nila, often as the sun is set, we will hear the final blast of the shofar. We will also declare the most essential teaching of the entire season, God is merciful. We actually chant this seven times just to make sure we get the point. The gates are closing, but the mercy of God never ends. So please remind God of God's mercy and ask that God let Moses spend five minutes in the promised land he, ended, he earned it. So please find for my client and implore God to permit the promise, to put Moses into the promised land. Thank you for listening. I rest my case in Shabbat Shalom. Beautifully done, Yashar Koch. There is no better way to take on the rabbi.
than with words of Torah. So, uh, elu ve'elu, where both are the words of God. So beautifully done. I know that we're going to conclude on Zoom separately from the sanctuary. Uh, so those in the sanctuary, let's all rise for Alenu. Those on Zoom, you can ignore us because your <laughs> leaders are coming really soon. Uh, but the words can be found on page 586. Alenu leshapeach la'aton hakol Latet gedula le'otze breshi Shelo asanu ki goye haratzot Velo samanu ki mishpechot ha'adam ha Shelo samcher kenu kahem Vegohol aleinu kechol ha'amonam Vanachnu koruin umishtachavim modi Lifnei melech malachei hamlachim Hakadosh paruchu Veneemar vehaya Adonai Continue on page 598 with the words of Mourners Kaddish. And as is our custom, we invite the mourners in our midst to rise first, to raise their hands so that we can acknowledge them as mourners. And if you will recite the names of those individuals and perhaps the relationship of those individuals you're remembering. And so in support of all the mourners in our midst, let's all rise if you're able as a community as they lead us on page 598 with these words. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemirabah. Amen. V'yama divrach rute v'yamlich malchute. V'chayachon v'yimachon v'chaye d'cho b'yit Yisrael. B'agalav izman kari v'yimru amen. Yeheshme Rabba Mevarach le Alam Olame O Maya. Yit Barach Vishtabach Vit Baar Vit Ramam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shmeid Gurshab Rehu. Le Elamin Ko Berhota Veshirata Tush Berhata Venechamata Tamiran Vyama Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya. V'chayim alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, hu ya'ase shalom alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ya'ase shalom, ya'ase shalom, shalom alenu v'al kol Yisrael v'ya'ase shalom. Yahase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Koy Yisrael. First of all, thank you for those who helped beautify our service with the beauty of song, Yashar Koch. Uh, soon we're going to go outside and celebrate with Oneg. But before we do, I just want to acknowledge um, Eric for Where Are You? Right there. Somewhere. Right over there. Yashar Koch, beautifully done. I want to say happy Labor Day weekend. Um, there's no better way to celebrate Labor Day weekend than coming to Shabbat services and reflecting on rest. Um, but I do want to say this is a year that I'm told that it's hard to find laborers. 
Um, and there are more customers getting frustrated and venting their frustration at those laborers. So I think maybe the biggest mitzvah we can do this weekend is if you're at a restaurant or a store, just thank those people who are behind the cash register for standing up and helping the supply chain move into our carts or whatever. Um, but I hope everyone has a good Labor Day weekend. And you've made the right choice because waiting in line at, in the Bourne Bridge or wherever you could be right now, <laughs> just not the place to be. This is it. So uh, let's celebrate Cantor Safranaria. Did she uh, hop out? Oh, she went to Zoom. Oh, they thought it was a surprise. Oh, that's yeah. so nice. Excellent. Because <laughs> she gave birth to all of this beautiful music. Will you come on up with me? You don't have to sing with me. Just come on up. You get to hold the cup, just like a bat mitzvah student. Here we go. Page 123. Baruch HaTarunai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pebri HaGafen Baruch HaTarunai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotam V'ratzavanu V'shabat Kodsho B'ahava U'v'ratzon Hinechilanu Zikaron le maase vereishi Ki hui hom tefila le mikra e kodesh Zechel et siyat mitzrayim Ki vanu hachata Viotanu kidasha Mikol hamim Shabbat Kochecha, Vyahava Uratson, Yin Haltanu, Baruch Hata Adonai, Mekatesh, Ashabat. Amen. You got to take the sip. We'll find out. And then if you just received your own Hebrew name, can you come fine, forward to help us <laughs> uncover the challah? You can uncover it. Yeah. Voila. There we go. Ready? One, two, three. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hamotzi lechem min haaretz you get to take a piece, rip a piece, take a bite, which will complete the mitzvah, and now we can say Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. shalom. Mazel tov. Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom